Greetings folks and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. This week we have so many different projects and cool things to look at that we've had to split it into two sections, although we still find a little bit of time for funding website things and of course the mystery box competition. So with all that to get through, let's get going. And we are starting this week's show with Great Scott. Now, uh, Great Scott is a YouTuber who we've got, uh, featured on the show before. Um, he's done a load of absolutely crazy projects, um, always very, very well. Um, but also, it's one of those YouTube channels where um, you will learn a lot by being there. The fundamentals of electronics that he teaches are very easy to follow. And he's got a lot of different videos about microcontrollers as well. But this specifically is a follow-up to a video from a few weeks ago that I didn't have space to fit into the show, but it's something that I'm quite interested in. Um, this is making power using a stationary bike um, and this video is particularly interesting because um, you can see uh, in the background here that he made a homemade jig for uh, making power using an alternator um, and that video in and of itself is fascinating do go back and watch it but the interesting thing about this is that the the his uh, youtube audience have given him a bunch of different suggestions that he iterates through and tries different versions of um, and so just this single video alone actually teaches you quite a bit about how to generate your own power and the pitfalls you might fall into um, and at the end you hear exactly how much power he has created and how long he would have to pedal to power his house and uh, yeah it's it's quite large but yes as always this video is beautifully shot and well presented and it is a great uh, view into iterative design and crowdsourcing that iterative design something that i'm quite interested in as well because just out of shot up here in the attic of dreams you can't see i do actually have a stationary bike and it has crossed my mind that it might it might be quite nice to try and rig up a way to charge my various different uh, power banks that are used for mobile phones and things like that that's something for the future perhaps but for now i shall make sure there's a link to this video in the description of this video we return to Andreas Spies, who has another fantastic video about ESP32s and the power that they consume when on battery power. Uh, now, as always with an Andreas Spies video, this isn't just a, uh, a quick one to uh, test. It's very, very detailed and it actually takes you through um, how uh, battery operated microcontroller boards can work the optimal way those circuits can be designed um, and the various pitfalls that they can fall into. Um, and there's a massive range of boards that he tests, including the Tiny Pico from Unexpected Maker, which is a board we featured on the show a few weeks ago. And in fact, I have one sitting on my shelf over there. I've been really looking forward to digging that out and having a fiddle. Um, and this essentially is a video that just says, okay, here's a bunch of different ESP32 boards. Which are the best ones to use on battery power? Which ones give you the best bang for your buck in terms of power? And as previously mentioned, this actually goes through all the components of how something like this can work optimally. Um, and just to note, um, this video is definitely well worth a watch. It is fascinating. But if you are just interested in the comparison itself, um, he has a fantastic uh, uh, spreadsheet of all the different ESP32 boards you can get. There's a huge amount of them on here. It's getting added to all the time. Um, and yeah, yes, uh, some of the ones from the more recent video are down here at the bottom. Um, and it has all of the things you need to know, not just power. It has everything to do with the uh, number of pins and everything that it can do this is a fantastic resource if you are looking into maybe getting a few esp32 development boards and don't know which one to get one of the nice things about this video is that he uses a power profiler from Nordic. Now this is actually a little development board that I will be writing about for Electromaker quite soon. I've got one and I've been using it and they are absolutely fantastic. Essentially it is a, a very uh, uh, a very accurate uh, power reader from like, micro amps up to one amp, so perfect for reading things like microcontrollers. Um, and it will give you a graphical readout of all of the different power consumption um, and you can save it down to a very fine grain. Fantastic bit of kit that I will be writing about later. Although it would be remiss of me not to quickly plug the Electromaker sh uh, shop right now because this is one of the things which I think is uh, a, a sort of different thing to get. Um, if you are really interested in the power consumption of the things that you are making on the lower current scale, these things are truly fantastic. I'll be coming looping back to this in a later show um, with the article that I write. Um, but just for now, if you are interested in getting a professional grade bit of kit for finding out exactly how much uh, power consumption you're using, which has a full fleet of GUI and all that kind of stuff, we do sell it in the store. But anyway, that tangent advert aside, um, this brings us back to this uh, uh, this measurement of all the ESP32 boards because it allows him to go into great detail and run them all through a battery of tests. Now, of course, I'm not going to spoil it. You'll have to watch the video yourself to find out which ones perform best and which one you might want to get for a battery powered ESP32 project. Now, in last week's show, Future Ian did point out the triumphant return of photon, uh, photonic induction. Um, and uh, this uh, intro will be very nostalgic to some. In fact, I know it's very nostalgic to everyone because that's almost every single comment on this video. But he is back. 
Um, and uh, yes, in the background, you can see his beautiful collection of uh, mercury rectifiers. Because before we had diodes uh, to make um, rectifiers to rectify AC voltage, DC voltage, we used mercury in glass tubes. And uh, they're just beautiful things. Um, I don't want to spoil this video at all. So in a rare display of, um, I, don't, I don't know what you'd call it. Is it teasing? I don't know what this is. I'm not gonna show any more of this video. If you're not familiar with photonic induction, um, there are years of videos to watch. He's one of the craziest electricians on YouTube and a, uh, a, just seems like a thoroughly fine chap as well. Uh, content warning, some of the language ain't necessarily there. Uh, if you're uh, sensitive to that, but yes, go and watch this video. This is a very clean video for him. You will not be disappointed. It's just wonderful, and I'm so glad he's back. Now for something a little bit different. Chances are, if you watch this show, you use single board computers uh, and therefore use Linux on them. Or maybe you are just a Linux day-to-day -day user. As I've said several times uh, in the time that this show has been running, I am kind of uh, agnostic when it comes to OSs because I use Windows for all of my media creation. I use Windows to make this show, but my laptop is uh, Ubuntu Linux, well, Linux Mint, um, which is just the distro that I landed on. I don't really get into the argument about which Linux distro is best. But one thing I've always been interested in doing is really building things from the ground up. Now, this is the Low Level Devil YouTube channel, um, and I have featured Low Level Devil on the show before because uh, one of the video series that he has is how to create your own operating system for the Raspberry Pi. This time round, he is covering how to build your own Linux distribution from scratch. Um, and uh, in his typical style, it is uh, very calm, very uh, long form. It takes you through every single step, explaining why it works and what it's, uh, what it's for. Um, and this is just part one of a several part series. Um, this is the kind of thing that um, I, I sound like a stuck record. I say this all the time. Even if you have no interest in making your own Linux distribution, this is fascinating to watch and to see uh, step by step these slow steps needed to actually build your own Linux distribution um, and uh, understand the uh, underbelly of what is going on on your operating system. It's just fascinating. It's a fantastic video. Um, and uh, there are three parts of the series out right now. Um, he seems to be re uh, releasing them at quite a clip. So I don't think you're going to have to wait too long for the next one as well if you get through parts one, two, and three. So I will leave a link to it in the description of the video. And as I mentioned before, if you are specifically interested in his Raspberry Pi series, um, he does have a Raspberry Pi bare metal tutorial um, along with uh, OS development on the Raspberry Pi as well. There's a huge amount of videos on his channel, all very similar, all, well, low level. He is the low level devil after all. <laughs> Now, despite the huge amounts of projects we are trying to fit into the show, I do have time for a very quick funding website thing. So we are returning, as we so frequently do, to CrowdSupply with a Microlab Kiwi and Kiwi Lite. Uh, let's just get me out of the way altogether, shall we? Yes. Um, now, these are, uh, as it says here, powerful and easy to use FPGA and ESP32 development platforms. Um, I still have on my list for things that I would like to do um, is learn about FGPA. Uh, I've, done, I've done it again, haven't I? FPGA. There's a, a Last from the past, me not being able to say FPGA. Um, I would love to uh, go through the very basics. I don't have the time to really learn to develop them and I don't need to, it's not my job, but I do find them fascinating. It's by far uh, the most difficult concept to grasp in terms of microcontrollers, um, which is weird because in theory, they are actually very simple things. It's just doing anything with them that's hard. Uh, the idea behind this, uh, as you can see here, um, is that is uh, that it is a dual uh, uh, board. Well, at least the uh, the micro lab Kiwi is the Kiwi Lite is slightly different. Um, so the 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 key uh, thing it says here is it has an FPGA, it has an ESP32 S2 on it. So it provides the unique ability to develop your projects with a familiar ESP32 and then move on to the FPGA for more complicated tasks. For example, creating a logic analyzer on an FPGA board can be quite hard. The ESP32 makes it much easier to process the data and display it. Now, while they don't implicitly say it um, in this uh, readout, it makes me think that you could essentially get this board, start off by uh, programming the ESP32 in the Arduino IDE if you want, whichever way you find easiest, and then slowly dump off things onto the FPGA learning as you go. It seems like it's a very wide ranged board and it's a quite nice little footprint as well. Uh, it's, it seems to me, I can't really think of another board that has exactly this shape. It's a little bit wider than your Adafruit uh, Feather board as well. Um, so as I mentioned, there are two versions of this. There's the Microlab Kiwi, which has the ESP32 and the FPGA on it. If you just want to get uh, straight down to FPGA work, there's also the Kiwi Lite, uh, just as useful, but without the ESP32 and other peripherals. 
Um, so, uh, as you can see by the format of this page, this is pre-launch, although it's quite a uh, detailed pre-launch page. We will definitely be coming back to this when it goes live to find out how much they want for it. Um, and, uh, of course, if you want to know when that happens, you can go to CrowdSupply and enter your name into the box for that. Um, but, yes, uh, there have been several similar beginner-style FPGA boards flying around. Um, I've never got around to getting one myself. Maybe this is the one that I will get to start tinkering with FPGAs. Who knows? Maybe I'll take to it like a duck to water, but I think I probably... Probably won't. <laughs> But yes, for those who have a little bit more time or perhaps a little bit more brain power than I have to put into learning about FPGAs and are looking for a nice board to get started with, this does look like it has a number of nice features to it. So I will leave a link to it in the description of this video. Just before moving on, a little quick housekeeping. If you are enjoying the Electromaker show, there are three very simple ways that you can help us. The first is to subscribe to the channel if you are not already. Um, the second is to click like on the video if you are liking it. It seems like the majority of people like this video, although we had one unhappy customer. Um, and here, this is the notification bell you'll hear people talking about on other channels. Um, it does do us a great favor if you do select all notifications. What this will mean is you will get a little notification up here in the top corner when we upload to the channel. And we pretty much only upload the Electromaker show to the channel. So if you are enjoying it, it's a good way to know there's a new uh, episode of the show out as soon as you head to the YouTube website in general. Um, none of these things are compulsory, but they do help us out a lot. And as always, do consider uh, visiting the Electromaker.io shop if you're looking for equipment. And there will be a link in the description to the Electromaker Discord channel where you can come and hang out with us. But anyway, uh, that is our little self-promotion corner over with. Let's Let's get on with the rest of the show. It is time for us to return to the mystery box competition. Yes, the mystery box competition is very simple. This is a box of mystery. As you can see, it has mystery box written on it. And it was given to us by the wonderful people at Mauser Electronics. And each week it works much the same way. I reach into the mystery box. Oh, Lord, there's more. Uh, and uh, cause a small avalanche, apparently. Anyway, I reached into the mystery box um, before I caused everything to fall apart and pulled out uh, this Maxim uh, 120 San Gabriel Drive. That's just where the company's from. Hang on. This is a Maxim Maximax ADC RDT. Oh, the wait, this is a temperature sensor, right? Precision temperature sensing couldn't be simpler. It's literally the first thing it says at the very, very top, but I am incapable of reading. Um, yeah, this is a precision temperature sensor. Let me have a little look at what this is. Okay, so having done a little bit of research on this, um, I thought I had to bring in quality camera two, and this really is quality camera two this week. So um, if you will just focus on that for me, that would be lovely. Um, this is a little development kit essentially for a temperature sensor but not your average temperature sensor this is a very very accurate one in fact as you may be able to see on the packaging just here it is a 16-bit adc that resolves temperature to tenths of a degree um, and then the uh, actual measurement unit on the end here the sensor itself is on a little snappable break uh, break off board meaning that you can put this wherever you want it to uh, uh, take temperature uh, readings from and it will work with the integrated IC and you can see there's a timing crystal on there too and a way to attach it via USB. Um, this is a really fancy little bit of kit. I'm used to uh, having a temperature sensor about because you, you get them in most Arduino kits, but I haven't really fiddled around with a really, really high precision one. Um, and so this will be a really interesting thing. I'm very interested to see what whoever wins it uh, will get up to with it. Um, so yes, this has been the debut of actually Decent Camera 2. Um, we'll be seeing a lot more of Decent Camera 2 as the show goes forward. Um, but for now, what we need to do is pick a prize winner. So, just a reminder that Mystery Box Prize winners are chosen at random uh, from the comment section of the previous week's video. And uh, this time round, the winner is Patrick Rankin, who has a very nice comment saying how much they look forward to the show each week. It genuinely means a lot to hear that. Um, and also, congratulations, you win this fantastic little sensor. Um, we'll be in touch with you as to how we can send it out to you. Um, the Mystery Box will continue. We'll have plenty more things in this box of mystery to give away. We also have a few special competitions coming up in the following weeks. But for now, let's get on with the rest of the show. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, we have so many projects to fit in that I had to split it into two distinct sections. And this is the Electromaker project section, all projects that appeared on the Electromaker website recently that I thought were awesome and were worth sharing in the show. Um, but before we get to that, there is a little bit of quick news from Pine64. So here we are on the Pine64 blog, and there is a written blog post here. There is also a video version of the written blog post, uh, which doesn't go into quite as much detail, but still covers everything largely. Um, there is 
quite a lot of stuff here as uh, you can see um, so rather than me go through every single aspect of it because this is quite a long blog um, I have uh, had a quick read through it and there is a lot of very interesting stuff here if I had to cherry pick one thing because it's something we have talked about on the show before it's that we talked about the new Pine 64 quartz boards the uh, quartz 64 boards they are now available in the Pine store um, I imagine these are going to go rather quickly but they come in a 4 gigabyte and an 8 gigabyte model the 4 gigabyte one is 59 99 the 8 gigabyte one is 79 dollars and 99 cents and um, as you may remember from talking about it last time they are 64-bit arm cortex a55 cpus with a bunch of other really nice peripherals um, but anyway i will leave a link to this uh, update in the description because it's a really fun one to read through i'm looking forward to actually uh, pushing this to my kindle so i can read it properly because uh, uh, i tend to only find time to read things really properly when i'm in bed um, and that's what i'm going to do with this this evening but i will leave a link in the description of this video Video. Now moving on to those Electromaker projects and the first is a musical one. A little bit different to the kind of thing that usually gets me super excited because you know me I like to make instruments and things you can plug in and out of and pops and whistles and woo but this is something different. This is using a Raspberry Pi to make a high quality audio streaming box, a dedicated box for listening to music which might sound a very strange thing to say but I feel like even that is becoming almost retro at this stage given that so many of us are using our mobile phones or our computers as primary audio sources um, I don't know about you but in my house I don't have a stereo I don't have a radio I don't even have a television everything comes out of Bluetooth speakers mobile phones things like that I really love the idea of having a standard box which I can control and this is that so this is a project written up by Orchard Audio, and Orchard Audio are the people who actually created this uh, DAC. This is a very high quality digital audio converter that fits inside a case. These are all parts that you can buy from them, and it works with a Raspberry Pi 3, I believe. Um, although uh, I actually kind of think that's a really nice thing because I have so many Raspberry Pi 3s and frankly I don't really use them as often as I used to because I also have several Raspberry Pi 4s. Knowing that a Raspberry Pi 3 will do everything I need it to in terms of high quality media uh, streaming music wise means yeah this is the perfect thing for it. Um, so uh, this, the, the project right of itself is very short. It's mostly just all about this video and how to build it. And if you are interested in getting a hold of it, there is a link here to where you can buy the DAC. And of course, if you want to get a Raspberry Pi 3, you could always use the Electromaker store. Although I think I've already plugged that once in this show. Sorry, du double plugage. Very, very bad. Very bad, Ian. Um, but yes, uh, this is truly a thing of beauty. Having headed to their website and having, having a little read about it, um, it is really a well-made, well-put-together, and well-thought-out high-quality DAC, digital-to-audio converter, commonly known as a DAC. Um, so these uh, are high-grade uh, bits of equipment, and hence the price tag. Although, bear in mind that you are supporting a uh, small creator when you do this. This is not a massive multinational corporation pumping these things out by the hundreds of thousands. Uh, this is someone who has designed this and is making them themselves. You are getting something that someone cares, some, something that someone cares about. Um, and if you're looking for a semi-project uh, sized thing that will fit together with a Raspberry Pi to create a dedicated music streamer, this is definitely worth a look. So I will link this in the description of the video. Um, you can take a look through um, and uh, see if it's the kind of thing that would appeal to you. So this is perhaps a little bit expensive for me to uh, impulse buy, but I do think it is a wonderful thing, and I am seriously considering getting a dedicated music setup up here in the Attic of Dreams. I'm up here working enough uh, as it is. So um, if you are interested in it, head to the link in the description and you can read all about it, watch the video, and of course head to the Orchard Audio link if you would like to buy one. Now, we are big fans of retro gaming on the Raspberry Pi here, it's something we talk about fairly often, um, but this is something quite special, because uh, this GameCube case has been custom stenciled to look like R2-D2, and is a housing for a Raspberry Pi rather than the GameCube, Game, GameCube guts. Uh, this is a retro gaming machine that looks retro and actually has a retro case, but that has been modernized. Um, and all of the different parts um, that were cut out here in order to make the stencils are available. So um, on the Electromaker project site here, there is uh, the story behind it and how it was made um, and all of the different parts you need to create the stencils and the custom parts and the enclosure on the inside. 
Um, now, I will leave a link to this in the description, but I did also want to point out that the Raspberry Pi Foundation blogged it, which is always wonderful to see. It's very nice to see people on the Electromaker website making stuff and it getting recognized. Um, and yes, as you can see here, this is a, a customized GameCube uh, with uh, spray paint, hand-cut stencils, um, and uh, there's yeah a, a load of super interesting information as to how this build came together. So um, I'll link both of these in the description of the video. Um, there's a bunch of other really cool Star Wars stuff in this uh, uh, blog post on the Raspberry Pi Foundation website as well. But yes, what a fantastic project. Um, Electro user 301 I very much doubt that's your name, but what a fantastic job. Moving on to the machine that destroys what it creates. Now this is wonderful. It is a coffee table, um, and what it does is actually not dissimilar to the aquarium that I showed in last week's show, perhaps the week before. That is that it has a ball that moves around on sand, and underneath it there is a magnet that pulls it around, um, and you can draw various shapes on it. The difference is this one is much larger, and it is hit, uh, inside a coffee table. Now uh, this is from DIY Machines, and there is of course a fantastic video as with all of his projects. Um, and projects from DIY Machines are uh, quite special to us here at Lex Electromaker because he has helped Electromaker create the Electromaker kits. Yes, the Arduino Skittle sorter machine uh, was put together by DIY Machines, and in fact, if you look at the video on the Electromaker YouTube channel about how to put it together, he is hosting that video for us. Um, these Electromaker kits are still available, by the way. If you want to get one of these, um, they're a fantastic thing you can give as a gift and put together, um, but that's not really what we're doing right now. What we're looking at is the latest thing that he has made. And look look at that. That's really, really quite professional, really quite wonderful. It's a functional table, and I know that sounds like a silly thing to say, but um, it's it, this is a, a real piece of furniture that does something truly stunning. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the fact that this isn't just a, uh, a look what I made video, this is a step by step how this thing works and how you can make it yourself. Um, all of the parts that you need are here. Uh, all of the code that you need is provided. Um, you could follow this as a beginner and come up with something just as beautiful as that to finish with. This is a truly fantastic project um, and it's so nice to see a big project on the DIY Machines channel again because yeah, Lewis is just a fantastic maker. Finally, the Internet of Bees. Yes, this is a monitor for a beehive. Um, it is battery powered, it is cellular, it's designed to be left there and work in a very low power way and give important information about the beehive, like whether it's been moved and the temperature and the humidity, all things that are important to know uh, to keep a happy set of bees. Now, I'm quite taken by this project because we do have a beekeeper in the family and I understand that looking after bees can be quite fraught. Um, but there's a, a couple of things here that I think would be super useful. Um, uh, so, for example, like I say, um, if the hive is moved or knocked over, you get an instant notification. That's nice. It also uh, has a, a monitoring the internal temperature and external temperature and humidity. Um, and then, as it says, uh, it's a low cost form of cellular connectivity. Um, so this is uh, it's LTE CAT M1. I have never heard of that before. Um, but if, if it's the same as 2 g slash 3g for small packets of information that's absolutely all you need it also uses some quite interesting hardware now this uses a particle boron board which is a little microcontroller development board for working with 2g and 3g networks as you can see here um, there is also an adafruit wing which is the uh, uh, analog devices one which has the temperature and motion sensor on it so um, you're actually getting the motion sensing and the temperature and humidity sensing all in one little board it's very compact in that regard um, and as you can see the full setup here um, also has a l uh, lithium ion battery here for powering the whole shebang um, this is just a uh, as I say so often just a really nice uh, project bringing simple uh, development boards together in a way that gives you a proper useful project um, there's no way that this couldn't be useful for someone who looks after bees because these are all things that are essential to know you do not want that hive to get kicked about or knocked over in the wind and you do want to know what the temperature is there because bees need to survive in different temperature variants and you need to know if you need to make any changes to the internals of the hive so this is a very lovely project and also um, as mentioned there's a lot of information as to how you can get it all set up um, so even if you didn't have bees, for example, if you just wanted to set up your own completely wireless, battery-powered, free-from-Wi-Fi, temperature, humidity, and motion sensor for anything, this is a fantastic project to look at. Um, even if you didn't have access to the particle boron, um, the theory behind how this works will still apply to other boards. You'll just have to find your own way of connecting. Um, so yes, this is definitely worth a look. So yes, The Internet of Bees by Gus Gonnett on the Electromega website. I will leave a link to this in the description. Um, and indeed, there'll be a link to all of the fantastic projects from this week. Like I said at the start of the show, there was just so many I thought it was worth lumping them together at the end like this.
That was our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you, as always, for all the support you are showing this show. Be that on YouTube by doing the whole subscribe dance I talked about earlier, or by supporting us on electromaker.io by visiting the website, reading the blog, and visiting the store to buy your components for your things to do. Speaking of things to do, I hope you have a fun and creative week. If you do do something cool in it, please let me know in the comments, and I will see you in the next show.